might be participating in this. Welcome. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Hi, Mayor. You're not even Kyle. Kyle, right. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, let's get right down to business. Uh, you, you know we want to talk about our roads again. In this case, a more specific instance, uh, but a big uh, instance of road improvement coming in the near future. Uh, Lincoln is booming. You all are aware of that. Over the last eight years alone, as we said to you before, nearly a billion dollars has been invested in the community, accelerating Lincoln's already strong growth rate. Our population has grown by over 28,000 people, and the city limits have expanded from 86 to over 93 square miles. It's a great time in our history. Growth in our city's area and population must be accompanied by growth and expansion of our roads, of the whole roads network, in fact, to ensure that our residents can travel the city quickly, efficiently, and safely. The intersection at 14th and Old Shaney and Warlick is an example. The intersection is a major transportation uh, corridor and crossroads for Lincoln. It is one of the very busiest intersections in town, handling nearly 38,000 cars per day. It provides critical access to schools and job sites and homes and shopping centers and a wide range of other important community activities. Due to South Lincoln's tremendous growth, the intersection's existing design will not be adequate to handle future traffic volumes. By 2040, the intersection will see 59,000 cars per day, a 55% increase in projected traffic volume. That's why we commissioned uh, a design competition in 2012 the idea, as you know, was to solicit innovative solutions for an important intersection that is challenged by its surroundings. The campuses of two major Lincoln employers, a retail center, and a church are all very close to the intersection. The design competition has proved to be an enormous success. Three designs were uh, put forward. A portion of one design, a portion of one design, recommended an inexpensive alternative to improve traffic flow that simply required the restriping of lane lines and changing traffic signs. We implemented that strategy in 2013, and drivers immediately noticed a marked decrease in traffic congestion. A little paint. And a few new signs went a long way in that situation. I doubt if, if uh, my friend Roger has seen anything go that far <laughs> with so little effort. Huh? <laughs> but that parcel solution has, uh, was never envisioned to be the permanent solution. It was envisioned as an intermediate measure to allow us to more thoroughly examine the three proposals submitted as part of the design competition. Our examination included three questions. Does the design provide safe and convenient travel across the growing area of our South community? Does the design solve traffic congestion now and into the future? Which design was best to accommodate the needs of the existing nearby businesses, homes, and churches, as well as uh, future development in the near vicinity. The design that best answers all of those questions is the elevated roundabout proposed by FHU. The FHU design has the capacity to service for the next 40 years. Its negative impact on the surrounding businesses, churches, and homes is very limited. It greatly diminishes the potential for injury accidents, especially. Roundabouts are fast becoming the standard in communities across the country uh, and around the world. 
Roundabouts improve travel time and they improve safety. They even improve air quality by lessening the time vehicles sit idling at traffic lights. Our experience here in Lincoln is proving them to also be a right solution for Lincoln. On Sheridan Boulevard, roundabouts have reduced injury crashes by 60%. At the 14th and Superior roundabout, injury crashes are down 75%. Those are dramatic reductions and demonstrate how roundabouts can protect motorists and save dollars. There has been a learning curve for both drivers and designers at 14th and Superior. Modifications to the original design, however, have reduced the overall traffic rate by over 50% and it is now actually equal to the pre-roundabout intersection. The severity of crashes, however, has been dramatically reduced. These are now non-injury, bumper-to-bumper or sideswipe incidents instead of T-bone collisions causing serious injury. Every day, drivers move through these designs quickly and safely on the way to work and home and shopping and their other activities. At 14th, Warlick and Old Shaney, the FHU, FHU has engineered the <clears throat> roundabout to satisfy high level traffic flow from multiple directions while preserving access to local businesses. The circular overpass allows uh, through movements with ease and the signalized lower intersection provides local access. It will move traffic safely and quickly. My administration is willing to tackle the tough projects that are critical to future growth and we are dedicated to finding the right solutions. With this, section, with this selection, we are able to move forward on an important traffic project along several fronts. First, city officials and the design team met earlier today with, with area stakeholders. It is critical that the stakeholders have uh, a final decision uh, regarding the intersection's future, have a part in the final decision regarding the intersection's future so that they are able to plan their own future and their own expansion. As we refine the concept into a final design, we will continue to work closely with them on construction details uh, that best support their needs. Keep in mind, this is an initial design. Uh, all parts of it are subject to uh, more refinement and change. Second, this is a multi-year project. If we move right now, the new intersection will still take six to seven years to complete. Waiting any longer jeopardizes our ability to stay on a timeline that keeps pace with the area's continuing growth. We need to stay ahead of the game. It is also important that we begin now because we know additional funding for construction will need to be identified as part of the upcoming long range transportation plan update which will occur next year. The proposal to improve 14th Old Shaney and Warlick intersection creates many opportunities. Increasing the capacity of a key city intersection will create even more opportunities for economic growth. The project is an opportunity also to reduce crashes rather than watching them increase. Rather than struggling to keep pace with a future that is passing us by, it is an opportunity to implement a forward-looking solution that will keep us safely ahead of the increased traffic loads and congestion. We are moving forward because it's better to look ahead and prepare than to look back and regret missed opportunities. So having set the framework for you, uh, up here this morning, uh, is Mickey Esposito, our Public Works Director. 
uh, Kyle Anderson, Anderson uh, Rick Hayden, and uh, yes, Randy, of course. Uh, so with those folks here to answer specific questions, uh, why don't we open it up to specific questions? Mayor, in the news release, it says that the city council had uh, targeted $10 million for the project. Going more than that, then does that run counter to the city council's original wishes if they had approved $10 million? For I'm sorry, I didn't hear the, the uh, first the part of your question. In the news release, it says that the city council approved $10 million for the project, and you're saying that this will take more than that. Does that run into a problem then with the city council if it's over what they had projected for the project? Well, projections for different projects change all the time, and they'll have to decide whether that's a problem or not. Uh, but we don't expect it to be a problem. This, this will play out, I think, in everybody's mind to be the best solution. So what will you be doing first? Buying the land, getting a final design? And when do you hope construction starts? It'll, it'll be the routine process, which right. you can yeah. go ahead and describe, Nikki, if okay. you like, but it starts with identifying the pathway for the road and acquiring the right-of-ways. Right, and depending on how specific you'd like to be, um, obviously our, our public engagement process is going to be throughout the project. That's very important to this critical area. Um, but it begins with preliminary design, and we'll hand it over to these gentlemen to, to begin. We'll finalize contracts and get those going, and they will begin preliminary de design through to final design, um, and all the while talking to stakeholders. But remember, there's a lot of public right-of-way um, that we need to go through a public right-of-way process. There's utility relocations that will occur in the interim um, before we even break ground for construction. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything that I might have forgotten, but. Um. Yeah, I, I think I would uh, just point out that again, for the, uh, the terms of the design competition was a conceptual level design. So uh, we do fully expect the first step to sit down with the stakeholders and the city staff and work on refinements of the concept. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity for that type of engagement during the competition. So now that's more, more back to our normal process of working through those issues, refining some things, making adjustments, and uh, as uh, Mickey said, working with the stakeholders all throughout that process. Once we get that finalized, then it's the, the heavy lifting of actually designing it, figuring out the construction phasing and sequencing, and getting it ready for right-of-way acquisition and then finally uh, utility relocations. Kyle, can you say who you are in your firm? For yeah, I'm uh, Kyle Anderson, uh, Executive Vice President with Felsberg Holt and Olivik. Any timeline for when the construction might start? Yes. The, um, oh, go ahead, no, no, Mayor. Please. Sorry. It's um, on the CIP now, right? Yes, and yeah. um, we were anticipating construction to begin in the 1920 fiscal year. Um, so when we're talking about breaking ground um, for actual construction, we're looking at 1920, but remember, Pre nine, no, I mean <laughs> the fiscal year 2019-2020. Lord, <laughs> we speak in different terms, I suppose, but, um, but remember we're going to have utility relocations, and that's going to look like a lot like construction, so there could be activity out there before that. Uh, I think there's an extraordinary number of utility relocations in that area, are there not? Do you want to talk about um, the utilities there, in the area? There are some. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Rick. Yeah. Uh, we don't, have not identified <clears throat> which utilities will be relocated, but there are some very significant utilities within the area, water mains, uh, cable TV uh, is one. There's a, a major uh, connection through that area and several others, uh, storm sewers and others that we'll be working around. Drainage will be a major consideration within the area, but that'll be something that we'll be considering as we go from our conceptual design into our preliminary, working around those utilities. Uh, also giving them advance warning if we do have to relocate them. Our goal is usually to avoid the more significant utilities first. Rick, will you identify yourself as well, please? Uh, I'm Rick Hayden with Felsberg Holt and Olavig, also known as FHU. <laughs> <laughs>
I've got a question for you, uh, gentlemen. Um, how much experience does your design team have with similar projects like this? Yeah, uh, when we were in the design competition, we did a lot of research to, to find innovative solutions what were out there. And, uh, and so we found quite a few examples around the country of different grade separations and ways to treat those. Uh, for our firm itself, we've got uh, quite an extensive history of designing roundabouts. Um, if any of you have been out to Vail or Eagle, Colorado, we've got a series of four roundabouts tied together with an, uh, underneath the uh, interstate interchange out there. Um, we recently designed a dual roundabout system with a bridge over the uh, BNSF railway in Omaha that will be under construction hopefully about this time next year. So while this is unique in, in some features of a roundabout on top of a T intersection, the elements that are involved in it are very typical to what we've dealt with with other grade separation structures and other roundabouts as well. Mayor, what, what businesses are going to have to be relocated for this to occur? Uh, with respect to the buildings in the area, uh, the two largest employers on the south side at the intersection on the south side of uh, Old Shaney will be unaffected, I believe. Uh, the, the church uh, that is a little ways what well, is essentially on the uh, northwest sector of the intersection. Uh, we'll have a couple alternatives at least in terms of how the road proceeds around their property. And uh, it seems clear to me that they will be satisfied because there are plenty of alternatives there. They may have a couple little roundabouts of their own mm -hmm. <laughs> if they choose. Uh, but mostly in, in that area, it will be accommodating uh, uh, the church's desire to hold on to most of its land and build, and they'll be able to do that. Uh, then uh, the tightest uh, part uh, was the corner on the northeast, which, as you know, in recent years has, has had uh, at least three, four, four small buildings uh, built upon the area in the near vicinity to the intersection and only one of those buildings will be physically affected. Uh, as I understand it, it may be necessary to remove a bay from the closest uh, facility, uh, but, the, but uh, the businesses will be otherwise unaffected. And if I got correct information from the stakeholder meeting this morning, the stakeholders, including uh, those people, uh, were cheering that this was the one we right. chose, right? Because right. they were uh, not as well affected by the other alternatives. What, what business would be in that bay that would have to be relocated? It's, it's called Kate's It's called, okay, it's, the, it's on this way um, here. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. And again, remember, through refinements, where this is still under consideration, and through refinement of design, we're not sure whether that bay will have to be moved or whether we can work around it. So that's part of that engagement process that we talked about in further refinement of the engineering. But as it stands today, it's the nearest bay called Kids Play, and that's what we're we're, we're talking about. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about the stakeholder meeting a little bit to give insight to some remarks that we heard and um, how they were pleased with the selection. Yes, uh, one thing that was unique about the, the design competition was there was a, a separate stakeholder engagement process that was independent of the three teams that were involved. And we did that to not give any of the teams any particular advantage in terms of communicating uh, with those different stakeholders. So. Our information was somewhat filtered through there, uh, but, uh, but Steve Wolf uh, led that effort for the city and, uh, and did a great job. They felt at the end of the process today when uh, we unveiled the, uh, this decision that they felt very well represented, they felt like they were listened to, and that the features and elements that were important to them were addressed with this concept. And I think that that was uh, uh, very well evident from the comments that we received the uh, you know thanking the the mayor and his staff for uh, allowing them to provide that input throughout the process and not just 
ignoring their, their uh, desires and what they need to operate their businesses. So we feel like we're on a very good, strong footing with the stakeholders, and we're looking forward to be able to sit down at a table with them and get a little bit more specific about their details. So right now, Kids Play is the only business that's going to have to be relocated. Uh, yes, and I would also like to, to point out that we're, we're looking at a 2019 to 2020 time frame. So we're, we're looking out five years or so from now before construction would even begin. So this isn't something that's going to affect them immediately, but certainly in their long-range planning, we'd want to be able to work with them and the developer closely. I also think it's important to note that any property relocation, we go through a, a mm -hmm. right-of-way acquisition process, and relocation costs are reimbursed. Um, so that's just a part of our normal city acquisition process. So. Mayor, do you plan on making any budget changes in the next 30 days to the next year fiscal budget that would include additional money for this? That would include additional money for this? Addition, additional money for this. I'm not aware of anything, of any changes in the current thinking with respect to this budget this interim budget that's being put in place. All right. Are you good to go? All right. Thank you very much. For Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Yeah.